and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another book haul. And we are doing it in front of our lovely new bookshelf. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. So I have a couple new books, a nice little stack of newbies that we're going to go over. All of them are from local bookstores and then two new bookstores that I explored, one in Greensboro and one in Greenville. Greensboro, North Carolina, Greensville, South Carolina. I'll go ahead and post the names of those. So if you guys live in those areas or if you're ever traveling, you have places to go. So my first book I'm actually very, very excited about because I do love horror movies. So I'm very familiar with the idea of The Final Girl. And this book is called The Final Girl Support Group and it is by Grady Hendrix. Now, I do know he has a lot of other books. So you know I like finding authors so that if I like them, I can easily grab another book from them. So this one says, From Chainsaws to Summer Camp, camp Slayers, Grady Hendrix, fast-paced and wickedly humorous thriller, The Final Girl Support Group, pays tribute to and slyly subverts our most popular horror films, movies like The Chainsaw Massacre, A Nightmare on Elm, a Nightmare on Elm Street, and Scream. Lynette Tyson Saint is a real life final girl who survived a massacre. For more than a decade, she's been meeting with five other final girls and their therapists in a support group for those who endured the unthinkable, working to put their lives back together. Then one woman misses a meeting and Lynette's worst fears are realized. Someone knows about the group and is determined to rip their lives apart again, piece by piece. But the thing about the final girl is that no matter how bad the odds, how dark the night, how sharp the knife, they will never, ever give up. So I'm really excited to read this one. Um, and New York Times says, a great read. His characters are funny and real. So it looks like this one's going to give us some humor as well. Um, and yeah, I really like the way it's it's written. It even has like little, um, looks like cutouts about like, different stories or like scenes from movies and things like that that they're a part of. So really excited to read that one. Now the next one is really similar. The guy at the bookstore, and I got these from, I think it's pronounced Scumpernig. It's on the screen. You can see it. He actually showed me these two. The next one is My Heart is a Chainsaw. GQ says it's the best horror novel of the year. Okay, we're going to see. Um, and this one is by Stephen Jones, Stephen Graham Jones. So that one's considered to be horror as well, the first one. And so is this. So this one is a bestseller on USA Today, LA Times, all those people. And this one came out in 2021, so it's been out a while. All right, you won't find a more hardcore 80s horror fan than high school senior Jade Daniels. And you won't find a place less supportive of girls who wear torn t-shirts and too much eyeliner than Proof Rock. Nestled 8,000 feet up in the mountain in Idaho, right alongside Indian Lake, home to both Camp Blood, what's that a reference to? Uh, site of a massacre 50 years ago. And as of this summer, Terra Nova, a second home celebrity, Camelot being carved out of the National Forest. That's not the only thing that's getting carved up though. This Jade knows is the start of a slasher, but what kind? Who's wearing the mask? Jade's got an encyclopedic recall of every horror movie on the shelf, but what will that help her survive? Can she get a final girl trained enough to stop all this from happening? Does she even want to? Isn't a slasher exactly what her hometown deserves? This novel explores the changing landscape of the West through Stephen Graham Jones' distinct voice of sharp humor and prophetic violence. So... Looks like we're going to get some humor in this one, too. And it looks like it might pull from, like, scripts as well. Because the writing does kind of change. Let's see if I can kind of... Yeah, so it has, like, Slasher 101 and things like that. So, excited for that one, too. So, the next one is called The Resort. It's by Sarah Ox. Oaks? Not sure how to pronounce that. But, um, welcome to paradise. We hope you survive your stay. There are three rules to, f to follow during a vacation at the famous Kosang Resort. One, leave the past behind. When Kat says... The f Dang. <sighs> when Cass sets foot on the coast of Thailand's world-famous party island, she's searching for an escape. 
the dark secrets following her every move. Code saying becomes the perfect place to hide. Number two, always be careful who you trust. Now, years later, Cass is a local dive instructor alongside with permanents, a group of expats who have claimed the island as their own. The permanents don't linger on who they were before the island, simply because, like Cass, they all have something to outrun. And number three, if someone discovers who you really are, run. But suddenly a dive student is found dead and paradise comes crashing down. Because this isn't the first mysterious death on the island, it won't be the last. Someone knows who Kaz is and they're ready to make sure justice is finally served. So that's this one. Really excited about it. Um, I haven't read anything about this author. When I do read this one, it does go back and forth between different characters. So we like that. So going back and forth between like Brooke and then whoever that is we don't know yet but also the character Cass that we just read and as I'm flipping through this these chapters okay well some of them look really 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 short so um it looks like this is probably gonna be like a quick read because I feel like when the chapters are super short even if the book like has like over 300 pages because the chapters are so short you feel like they're like breathing through it now, the next one is Good Girls Don't Die by Christina Henry. And this one says, A sharp-edged, supremely twisty thriller about three women who find themselves trapped inside stories they know aren't their own. From the author of Alice and Near the Bone. All right, so Celia? Celia wakes up in a house she doesn't recognize. There's a little girl who claims to be her daughter and a man who claims to be her husband. But Celia knows this family and this life is not hers. Allie is supposed to be on a fun weekend getaway and then her, boy, her friend's boyfriend unexpectedly drives the group to a remote cabin in the woods. No one else believes Allie, but she's sure that something about this trip is very, very wrong. Maggie, who just wants to be home with her daughter, is in a dangerous situation and doesn't know who put her there or why. She'll have to fight with everything she has to survive. Three women, three, three, women, three stories, only one way out. The, capti the captivating novel will keep readers guessing until the very end. So this one seems interesting. I wonder if they're actually telling like each story... Like, kind of short story style? Nope. It just seems to be going chapter... Well, no, let me look. Actually, so part... It, it, it is in parts. So it seems like part one is Celia. And then after that, it goes into, yeah, Allison. So the story does go into parts. And then... Okay, and then part four puts them all together. So we'll get each... So it's kind of like three mini stories. And then like a fourth story at the end. So I'm interesting how that one's interested to see how that one's going to read. The next one, we already know I'm in love with this series. This is the third book in the um, Thursday Murder Club Mystery Series. I've only read book one, but I like to break things up. So I was like, let me go ahead and get this one because by the time I get through the second one and all the other horrors, at least I know I have something nice and comforting coming my way that's going to make me laugh. So if you have not gotten into the series yet, I highly recommend it, even one book in. This one says, The quartet of aging amateur sleuths remain wonderful company. That's from New York Times Book Review. And it says, it is an ordinary Thursday and things should finally be returning to normal, except trouble is never far away where the Thursday Murder Club are concerned. A decade-old case, their favorite kind, leads them to a, no a local news legend and a murder with no body and no answers. Then a new foe pays Elizabeth a visit. Her mission, kill or be killed. Suddenly the cold case has become red hot. While Elizabeth wrestles with her conscience and a gun, Joyce, Ron, and Ibrahim chase down the clues with help from old friends and new. But can the gang solve the mystery and save Elizabeth before the murderer strikes again? From an upmarket spa to a prison cell complete with an espresso machine, this third adventure of the Thursday Murder Club is full of the irresistible charm that readers have come to expect from Richard Osmond's best-selling secret series. Now, there is the fourth book that's out already. I haven't gotten that one yet. But the fourth one is out, and I'm kind of sad because I'm like, when's the next one coming out? Because once I get through those and get the fourth one, what am I going to do? I don't know. 
Now this one I actually, oops, this one I actually got from one of my repeat local stores here. <clears throat> and I'll make sure I include those in the um, chat too. That way if you're local to Charleston or you visit here, you don't know what stores. This one I actually literally just kind of bought because she said it was good. Um, this one is definitely writ written differently because it's not really written like a regular story. Like from the beginning, it is written, I don't know if you can see that, but it's like written with um, like chat messages and emails. And it's so funny because I saw another book like this. I was like, I will not be able to handle that because it was even more like, it was even more like they had like resumes in that one. So this is definitely going to be a different reading experience. But I'm excited. It is called The Mysterious Case of the Alperton Angels. It's by Janice Hollett. And um, it says the devil is in the details. So this one is, um, so you have a key that opens a safe deposit box. Everyone knows the story of the Alperton Angels, the cult who brainwashed a teenage girl into believing her baby was the Antichrist. When the girl came to her senses and called the police, the angels committed suicide and the mother and baby disappeared. Now, true crime author Amanda Bailey is looking to revive her career by writing a book on the case. According to records, the Alperton baby has now turned 18. Finding them both will be the true crime scoop of the year. But the rival author, but rival author Oliver Menzies is just as smart, better connected, and also on the mother and baby's trail. As Amanda and Oliver are forced to collaborate, they realize that the truth about the angels is much darker and stranger than they'd ever imagined. And in pursuit of the story, and in pursuit of the story, they risk becoming part of it. So really excited to read this. Like I said, it's totally written different than anything I've read. So I'm interested to see how like uh how like the story is gonna come together because it's totally in a it's totally in a different format, so very excited about that. I know I have already ordered bookends because I was like, maybe I won't need them, but they definitely will fall off. So I literally have the bookends in my cart and they'll be coming soon, so this doesn't happen. Now, the next two books, I actually got this from another local bookstore. Um, this one is called, the other one that I just talked about is called The Inner It Bookstore, and this one is called Main Street books or Main Street Reads. Either way, it's in the chat. But I'm going to jump on the Freedom Make Friends. Okay. I swear, one video I'm going to get through and not be stuttering all over the place. The Frida McFadden Chain. So I've never read one of her books because I was like, I don't like to read books that necessarily everybody's like, oh, you have to read this book. And because I feel like sometimes like people talk about things and they're not really that good but the person at the bookstore actually recommended it so I'm going to read it now I will say that I follow somebody else who like talks about books all the time and they mentioned that her books like somebody mentioned like her storyline seemed to be the storyline of another book and it's kind of like, ooh, is she taking other people's stories and just writing them? I'm not going to lie. When I read this book, The Locked Door, it does give a lot of similarities to another book. Now, I know there can be similarities, but this one was super, super similar. So I'm like, hmm, is there something to that whole thing about Miss Freedom and Fatten? Because it wasn't, it was a different book, not the book that I have, but I thought that was interesting. So when I read the back of this, I was like, well, wait, that sounds like exactly like another book that I've already read. But anyway, we're going to read it. We're going to see how it reads. I heard her books are really easy. I don't know why I thought the words on the page were bigger. But this one is called The Locked Door by Freedom McFadden. And it says, some doors are locked for a reason. While 11-year-old 11 11 Nora Davis was up in her bedroom doing homework, she had no idea her father was killing women in the basement. Until the day the police arrived at their front door. Decades later, Nora's father is spending his life behind bars, and Nora is a successful surgeon with a quiet, solitary existence. Nobody knows about her past, and she'll do anything to keep it that way. Then one of her young female patients is murdered, killed in the same unique and horrific manner that her father used to kill his victims. 
Somebody knows who Nora is. Somebody wants her to take the fall for the unthinkable crime. But she's not like her father. The police can't pin anything on her as long as they don't look in her basement. From New York Times bestselling author Frieda McFadden comes a riveting psychological thriller about guilt, secrets, and whether it's possible to outrun what's in your blood. Now let me go grab the book that sounds similar to Now, Frida McFadden's, this book, and she has a lot of books, um, but Frida, this one came out, alright, this one came out in 2021, and this one came out, well, it might be the other way around, we're gonna see. This one came out... So they both came out in 2021, but okay. So here's the back of this one. When Chloe Davis was 12, 16 teenage girls went missing in her small Louisiana town. By the end of the summer, her own father had confessed to the crimes and was put away for life, leaving Chloe and the rest of her family to grapple with the truth and try to move forward while, while dealing with the aftermath. Now, 20 years later, Chloe is a psychologist in Baton Rouge and getting ready for her wedding while she finally has a fragile grasp on the happiness she's worked so hard to achieve. She sometimes feels as out of control of her life as the troubled teens who are her patients. So when a local teenage girl goes missing and then another, that terrifying summer comes crashing back. Is she paranoid seeing parallels from her past that aren't actually there or for the second time in her life, is Chloe about to unmask the killer? Now, that is A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Wellingham. When you read, if you've read A Flicker in the Dark, I feel like it's very, like, literally when I was reading this, I was like, I've heard this before because she's now a successful doctor, a different kind. Her patient gets killed. Her father confessed to the crime. I don't know. They sound similar. But I'm going to read it and I'm going to see how I like it. The next one, I know this is another biggie. People have been talking about this. A Silent Patient by Alex Michael Leeds. Michael Leeds? So, he actually wrote The Fury, which is his newer book. I didn't really, like, feel like I would. Like, I've read the cover of that, like, the kind of summary. But when I read other books, I get inclined to buy the other ones, especially since that's the hardback. I'm like, it's not giving me hardback by price. So I did say I would try this. I didn't know they were the same person until they pointed that out inside of the bookstore. But she said this is a good one. And it says, Ale Alicia Berenson's life is seemingly perfect until one night when her husband Gabriel returns home late from work. And Alicia shoots him five times in the face and then never speaks another word. Alicia's refusal to talk or give any kind of explanation turns a domestic tragedy into a mystery that captures the public imagination. And she, the silent patient, is hidden away from the tabloids at the Grove, a secure psychiatric unit in North London. Criminal psychotherapist Theo Faber is captivated by Alicia's story and jumps at the opportunity to work with her. His determination to get her to talk and unravel the mystery of why she shot her husband will take him down a path more unexpected and more terrifying than he ever imagined. So, sounds good. It was recommended by um, the woman at the bookstore. So I'm gonna give it a try. Now the last three I got, I got from, I can't even remember the name of it, but this is the bookstore in Greenville. I will have that posted here. And this one's called, actually, no, I lied. I got this from the local bookstore here in Charleston too. It's Good Half Gone by Taryn Fisher. So. This one says, Iris Walsh saw her twin sister Piper get kidnapped, so why does no one believe her? Iris narrowly escaped her pretty popular twin sister's fate as a teen, kidnapped, trafficked, and long gone before the cops agreed to investigate. With no evidence to go on but a few scattered memories, the case quickly went cold. Now as an adult, Iris wants one thing, proof. And if the police still won't believe her, she'll just have to wait, she'll just have to find it on her own, in, in her own way. By interning at the isolated Shoal Island Hospital for the criminally insane, where secrets lurk in the shadows and are kept under lock and key. But Iris soon realizes that something even more sinister is simmering beneath the surface of the Shoal and that the patients aren't the only ones being observed. So I'm excited to read that one. 
Um, I also noticed that she co-wrote a book with Colleen Hoover. So I know Colleen Hoover is a popular person. But she is actually going to be here locally. I think, honestly, I think it's already happened. I think it was last week. She was actually here with Stacey Willingham. And they did like a, a book chat thing. But I was out of town. So this one is new. I think it came out mid-March. Like it came out just last month. So these last two are books that I got from the bookstore in Greenville. So now I'm posting the name of it. And this one is called A Killer in the Family by Cynthia or Gin Gintha? Gintha Lodge. That's what it looks like. And it says, when the police found the first body left on a bonfire in the forest, they worried that it showed the hallmarks of a serial killer. Now as they find the second, they know for sure. Panic about the bonfire killer quickly spreads through the sedate suburban area. Women are urged not to travel alone at night, and constant vigilance is encouraged among the local residents. But single mom, Aislinn Cooley, has a lot to distract her. Two beloved teenage sons and a quest to find her long-lost father, whom she hasn't seen since she was a teenager. After much debate, she decides to upload her DNA to an Ancestry website. When she gets a match, she's filled with an anxious excitement that her questions about her father's disappearance from her life might finally be answered. But to her horror, it's not her father who has found her. It's a detective who informs her that her DNA is a close match for the bonfire killers. Listen, that's what happens when you go look in the sky. And the last one is called The House Guest. I love this one because I don't know if you can see it, but it has like water beads on it. I think that is, that's so cool. Um, The Last House Guest by Megan Miranda. I feel like I've heard this name before. I don't know. But this name sounds so familiar to me. Anyway, she, um, this book says don't overstay your, I don't know, I was going to say she what. <laughs> don't overstay your welcome. Little Port Maine has always felt like two separate towns, and I, I do, an ideal vacation enclave for the wealthy whose summer homes line the coast and a simple harbor community for the year-round residents whose livelihoods rely on service to the visitors. Typically, fierce friendships never develop between a local and a summer girl, but that's just what happens when visitor Sadie Lohman and Little Port resident Avery Greer. But that's just what happens with visitor Sadie Lohman and L Little Port resident Avery Greer. The girls are inseparable until Sadie is found dead. While the police rule the death a suicide, Avery can't help but feel there are those in the community, including members of Sadie's family, who blame her. Someone knows more than they're saying, and Avery is intent on clearing her name, on clearing her name before the facts get twisted against her. Another thrilling novel from the best-selling author of All the Missing Girls and the Perfect Stranger, Megan Miranda's The Last House Guest, is a smart, twisty read with a strong female protagonist determined to make her own way in the world. Maybe I've just heard of like her uh, her name being mentioned, but that's this one. So those are all the books. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven new books in all. So if you've read any of these, of course, let me know. I'm excited to read them. Um, I won't get them, well, depending on how I do it, because I typically read them in order. So if you're new, I typically just read books in the order that I buy them. So I literally have another stack at the bottom of... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven books. On average, I read about eight a month. So even if I read eight or nine books, I should say a month, eight to nine books, it would still be May before I'm even ready to get into this stack. So I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, maybe I should mix it up and just kind of randomly pull some books. I don't know. Right now, I'm reading one. We'll see if I change it up, see if I get to any of these sooner. Maybe I'll mix it up so we can kind of dive into some of these newer ones. Because I'm not going to lie. I'm interested to read some of these newer ones I have at the bottom that have just been waiting there and in the stack. So we'll see. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you're new here, my name is Sarah. Thank you for coming. Stay, join the family. If you are returning, thank you for coming back all the time. I'm so happy you enjoyed the video and videos, videos enough to keep coming back. So 
I will see you in the next one. My name is Sarah. I think I've already said that. I need to stop talking. See you later. <laughs>